Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. This is Ben Russell along with David Verdugan. And tonight, on behalf of Tradeway, we're going to be your hosts as we talk about a pretty important topic. When you retire on 500,000, that's US dollars, and it's 2023. So uh, we'll start talking about some of those things. It's great to meet you. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, um, I get to talk to a camera a lot, but I'm talking to real people. That would be you. And I'm grateful that I have an opportunity of speaking with you. And whether it's live or if it's you watching this seminar after the fact, we're just grateful we get an opportunity to be able to, to put into you some of these ideas and these concepts that maybe you don't have anyone to help you with. So at Tradeway, what we're trying to do is to give you information that's related to these things in the financial world that you can find useful and helpful. And between myself and David tonight, well, our job is to try to show you some of the things about what might be possible and how maybe you can start answering some of those questions for yourself. So David, this is gonna be fun tonight. You're gonna to be our primary presenter. I really am looking forward to this tonight. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Ben. I really appreciate it. Um, guys, I'm excited to be with you today and, and, and to share with you this article that I had written. Uh, it's kind of an interesting topic. Can you retire on $500,000? And guys, we're going to give everyone an opportunity to, to have a meeting with us uh, at some point. So there's, I'm sure, many more questions that'll come your way um, that you might just want to sit down and have a conversation about. That's what we're here for. Well, that brings us back to our original question. Can you retire on $500,000? You know, back in the day, that was quite a bit to retire on, right? That could go quite a long ways. But these days, that might be different. You know, there's this little word called inflation that has changed a few things, right? So can you even still retire on $500,000? It may not really be possible anymore. Or is it? Maybe there still is a way. So we're going to be looking at that. We're going to look at kind of the, you know, how many people still retire, um, where they they just built up that nest egg, and then it's just depleting every year throughout. And then we're going to look at a different way. where We can maybe get a little more creative, maybe make things last a little bit longer. So I'm excited to, to dive into this one uh, with you. But, you know, we need some tools for this, right? Because, well, I don't know, how long do things retire? Uh, how long do things last, right? We, we need a specific calculator. This doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to go buy this. Actually, you can just go Google this. And I'm going to tell you what, that's exactly what I did. That's right. I Googled some and I found that one, that link right there. Feel free to take a screenshot of this if you'd like. You can just, you know, um, use that one later on. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing magical. It's just a very simple calculator that I had pulled up, and I'm going to show you a couple screens on there. So if we have $500,000, how long is that going to last, right? So with this calculator, we're going to go ahead and put certain th information in there. Um, we want to know how much are we going to withdraw each month before our expenses. Um, what are What's the ROI that we're looking for on the remaining funds annually, right? But there are certain things we're not gonna know. There are certain variables that we're just gonna have to ballpark. We're gonna have to estimate on, right? We're gonna be making some assumptions here because we just don't know future things like what are taxes gonna do? What are law changes that are gonna happen in the future? What are life's curveballs? You know, Ben, some of those life's curveballs can be pretty expensive, right? So we, we want to make sure that we have a, a ballpark, but we understand that we're never going to have an exact figure, right? So if the ballpark is good, then, then we know we can move forward. So let's go ahead and see. And again, I told you this one that I found, hey, I like simple stuff, right? A simple calculator right here. We put in our $500,000 in that current savings balance box. And uh, in this example, I'm saying we're going to withdraw $5,000 a month for expenses. Now, you might be thinking, by the way, David, I just put that link in the chat box. So for oh, those perfect. Of you, hey, I missed it. I went ahead and typed it out for you. All you got to do is click it in the chat box. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. Hey, if, if you're quick along, he might be able to just follow along with us here. So there you go. Um, yeah, $500,000 is what we're starting off with. 5,000 is what we're going to withdraw uh, in this example. Now you might be thinking, well, that's not very much. I need quite a bit more. And, and that's okay. That's okay. You know, you can put in whatever figure you need there. 
um, you might be thinking, well, I don't need that much at all, because when you include Social Security and whatever else that there might be coming your way, you might need significantly less. And that's OK as well. Again, we're looking at um, estimates right now. Right. And, you know, if if you wanted to have a conversation, a meeting with us later on, we can sit down and have a much more um, in-depth conversation looking at numbers that meet your needs better, right? We can tailor things to you. But in this example here, you got 500,000, I'm gonna pull out 5,000 a month for our expenses. And uh, like I said, I'm keeping it simple. I'm not even gonna deal with annual withdrawal increases, not gonna deal with federal marginal tax brackets. We're gonna be looking though at an 8% return annually. Why 8%? Well, it's just kind of like an industry standard that we slap on there of like, hey, on average, whatever, 8%. So that's what I'm going to roll with for today. When you hit that calculate button, this is what you get. Your money will last approximately 14 years with the systematic withdrawals. And you can see the chart down below here as well. You can see the gray bar, and that's going to signif um, signify the account balance. And every year is going down, right? You can see that our withdrawals um, each, each year total the same amount, right? But the amount is going down. And the if the funds last 14 years, and we retire at, say, 65 years old, how long do those funds last us? Till we're 79. Well, I hope you live longer, right? Now, coincidentally, the average lifespan in the US is 79. Uh, I, I didn't plan it this way for them to coincide perfectly. That, that was not intended. It just kind of happened that way. But I personally think 79 is too young to die, right? I hope you live longer. We should be striving to live longer. If you're healthy, it is not hard to live longer at all. Um, but the last thing we want to do is say, oops, I ran out of money too soon, right? I didn't die in time, right? <laughs> Those are not things that we want to say. So we want to be able to plan for much, much longer, maybe well into our 90s or even 100. If you have to throw a number on it, maybe just throw a number on it, throw 100 on it, right? Um, but wouldn't it be nice that day when we do pass away, if we can be able to give a good chunk of resources to our children and our children's children. Wouldn't that be something incredible, right? So we would love to see this um, dwindle a lot slower or maybe not even dwindle at all. But how can that be done? In order for that to happen, um, we need to be able to get creative. We need to actually be able to take our money and put our money to work. We're going to have to be willing to take some additional risk as well, right? So for that, uh, let's look at a different scenario. Let's look at a different scenario, and I want to introduce someone to you. I want you all to meet Bob, okay? Bob is a hard worker. He's saved money his whole life. He's paid his bills. Bob is debt-free. He did the whole Dave Ramsey debt-free scream, right? He's doing a whole lot of things the right way right? But Bob also has a little bit of a smaller retirement account than what he planned. He was hoping for having, you know, a couple million or so uh, when he retired and, and he did the best he could, but it, it didn't quite happen. So Bob is 65 years old now and he's retiring with $500,000. How's Bob going to make that work, right? He wants to do better than running out of money at the age of 79. He wants to do better than that. He wants to be able to pass money off to his children and his children's children, right? So he needs a different strategy. Bob needs to get creative. Um, now, it's interesting as we're talking about, you know, a different strategy or diversifying strategies, right? Uh, because so many firms out there just get you in mutual funds. And, and Ben, what, what's the thing that that mutual funds, like they're they're big thing, right? They're all about diversification, diversification, diversification. I find it hilarious because what is something they don't do? They don't diversify strategy. They do one thing. They just buy and hold. 
and just let it sit there. Okay. Well, that that's, you know, that can work well in certain situations, but not in all situations. I certainly wouldn't want to buy and hold during the dot-com crash. I wouldn't want to buy and hold during 2008. Uh, but Bob is going to learn some new skills and he's going to diversify strategy and start managing things um, a little smarter, right? So he's actually going to take 80% of his half million dollars, right? His $500,000 He's going to take 80% of that and he's going to invest that. And we're going to talk about how he's going to do that in a second. Um, he's going to take 20%, so about $100,000, and he's going to do some short-term training with that. And I'll explain what he's going to do with that as well. This is Bob's investment plan that he's going to be going for here. He's going to be looking for some growth stocks that have good fundamentals. They pay good dividends. Bob's going to look to buy them in 100 share increments so that he can write some cover calls. Bob's goal for his investment funds is a 1% monthly ROI on average. Yeah, you know, some some months you might not meet your goal. Some months you might exceed your goal, right? But on average, he's hoping to come out to right around the 1% mark monthly. Now, for some of you guys who've been with us for a while and learned about cover calls and everything, you, you might be thinking, well, that's, that's kind of low, actually. I mean, you, you could do better, you know, 2 3% on, on cover calls. Yeah, you, you absolutely can. You absolutely can. But remember, Bob is new at this and, and Bob's conservative. He's been conservative his whole life. You know, he saved money. He, he paid off his house quickly, you know, debt-free scream, all that. He's conservative. And there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. Um, but he's going to have some conservative goals here for his uh, investment plans as well. I'm just wondering, debt free scream. Uh, as some of us that maybe are not all that familiar with what you're talking about, Dave Ramsey, debt free scream. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, oh I, I bet I bet most of us are. But if you aren't familiar with this, you know he's got this whole thing, Dave Ramsey. You go through the seven step plan, or or actually you don't even have to go through all seven steps before you're debt free. But once you are debt free, you know he's got what, what is it? You can like tape yourself. Or I'm kind of dating myself here. You record yourself doing the debt free scream, I'm debt free, or whatever. And you send it in to Dave Ramsey and he posts it on. I don't actually know where he posts it, <laughs> but you can watch it online or something like that. And he's got a whole bunch of people. It's cool, right? You know, there are people that are getting themselves out of consumer debt and, um, you know, on, on a better track than what they were. Right. You know, sort of, I don't agree with everything he, he says or does, but he's certainly helping people get away from the consumer debt. So that's the debt free screen. They're like so excited. So anyway, little little side thing right there. <laughs> yeah. But Bob's trading plan, as we just talked about the investment plan, what about the short term trading? What's he going to do for this? Well, guess what? He's going to diversify strategy again. There's going to be multiple strategies that Bob's gonna use in his shorter term trading. Um, about 80% of those funds uh, are gonna be used for cash flow strategies. And 20% of those funds are gonna be used um, for the speculative strategies. So again, well, let, let, let's, let's just go to the next one here. Uh, I'll, I'll cover all the numbers in, in a second here because I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you. For cash flow, He's going to be aiming for some higher probabilities, uh, some lower ROIs, maybe some strategies like credit spreads, iron condors, even cover calls again. And for this portion of his account um, or his portfolio, he's looking for a 2% ROI monthly. Again, you might be thinking, we can do a whole lot better than that with some of these strategies. Yeah, you absolutely can. Bob's conservative, right? He also may not have his entire account invested all at the same time. So, you know, we're going to roll with 2% right now. For the speculative side, uh, Bob's going to be looking for some, he's going to be aiming for some higher ROIs. Maybe swinging for the fences, trying to hit a few home runs, Ben. And we're looking for some step one stock trades, straight options, debit spreads. And for this portion of his account, 3% ROI monthly. Now, guys, I got to make for the fences is 3%. For Bob, it is, right? For Bob, it is. 
for obviously for Ben, it isn't right. But Ben likes to hit home runs a little bit further, right? Maybe, maybe Bob is playing on, on a peewee league size, you know, where, you know, a hundred feet is like a home runner. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think the point is, is that you're not giving really big numbers here, man. I'm not giving big numbers yet, yet, but it, it gets exciting. It gets exciting. So, so stick with me guys. But I threw a lot of numbers at you guys. And I'm a numbers guy. I love numbers. I know Ben is too. Um, so, but just in case, we're going to review the plan because I just threw a lot your way. Bob is 65. He's starting with $500,000, right? 80% of that will be used for investing. So that's 400000 total. Um, and then 100000 will be used for short-term trading. That's broken up into two different sections there. 80000 for cash flow. 20,000 for speculative. Bob will also withdraw 5,000 monthly, just like he did in that first example, right? We're going to keep those um, variables the same there, right? So, so here's how it worked out. Now, for, for these calculations, uh, Ben, I actually used Microsoft Excel. Why? Because well, it got a little more complicated and, and the last uh, version wouldn't be able to do this specific thing. So I used Excel. Now, guys, I got to warn you, I'm functional on Excel, but I'm not fancy. So here's my spreadsheet. It's very simple. It's purely the data. OK, but I'm going to explain this. Um, can you guys see my mouse at all? Actually, I can't see my mouse. OK, mouse it, is. Fun. it is good. Yep. Perfect. All right. So here we go, guys. So Bob's $500,000 retirement account. We're starting off with, wait, let me close the Zoom tools just right. Perfect, that's better. Starting off with 500,000. Um, there's $5,000 of expenses each month, right? So right off the get-go, we're gonna start off with $495,000 um, to invest and trade. After he does the 1% uh, monthly on investments, 2% on cash flow, and 3% on speculative. These are the amounts that are allocated um, for the accounts. Now, once that's all done and rebalanced and everything um, added up, at the end of the first month, he has $501,000. Do you get that? After the first month, he has more money than what he had before even though he pulled out the same $5,000 that month, right? Second month, again, pulls out $5,000. Um, here's your total um, account balance after he pulled out the $5,000. We're going to rebalance everything. So we, we got the you know 80%, 16%, 4% there between these three groups. After doing the investing and trading, next month, $502,000 and almost $300. It keeps going up. I'm not going to read every line to you, but so on and so forth. At the end of year one, he's got over $514,000. So he's increased over $14,000. Remember, just doing simple 1%, 2%, and 3%. These are really conservative numbers, right? Even Ben was laughing at me earlier. Like, those are really conservative numbers. Yeah, even those conservative numbers can still in, you know, pay your expenses and increase. Now, yeah, you might be thinking again, well, what if my expenses are higher? Well, you, you might need to tweak things, right? You might need to tweak things. Maybe you're not um, increasing as much each year, right? But let's compare this to the first example. In the, in the first example, we looked at the $500,000 and they only lasted 14 years, right? Remember age 79, oops, <laughs> We, we, we live too long, right? Oops. But in this case, after 14 years, Bob is a millionaire. He's got 1.2 million. I just, I just grabbed the snapshot from that one line. That's his account value right there. $1.24 million after 14 years, right? Now, many of us know that if you're wealthy, you tend to live longer, right? That's a statistical fact. And so what if Bob went ahead and kept going with this plan and he made it to the age of 90? At age 90, he would have over $4 million in the account, $4.6 million. 
this is incredible. So, so Ben was saying those aren't very big numbers. Hey, Ben, is that a big number? I think it's a great representation of how small numbers over time can become very big numbers. Absolutely. Ben, you ready for this next one here? What do you think is going to be if Ben happens to – Ben, <laughs> Ben, I hope you make it to 100 as well, but what about Bob? What if Bob makes it to 100? What if Bob makes it to 100? I'm betting 12 million. 19. $19 million. Making 1%. In his investments, 2% in his cash flow, 3% in the speculative accounts, pulling the same 5000 a month every month. Now, again, you I think could that say, after Bob starts making money, 5000 he's probably going to up that a little bit. But you know what? Oh, after yeah. time, I think these numbers say you can afford to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if I were Bob at age 90, I'd be like, hey. Let's go on some cruises. Let's do some, you know, if I want to do that at 90, I don't know. But maybe even before that, you know. So I wouldn't expect that Bob would actually still be at 19 because he's probably going to increase his expenses, maybe increase his giving, right? He might have certain ministries. Maybe 5000 a month is what he's actually giving to missions. It's not even what he's pulling in for his expenses, right? So the opportunities now are endless. The numbers really get exciting. The math gets exciting. And yeah, his expenses might increase as he gets older, medical expenses. But you know what we didn't talk about with increasing? His skills. What if his skills increased? Ben, you think that after 10 years of investing and trading, Bob could maybe do a little better than 1%, 2 and 3%? What if Bob did 2 4 and 6%? I haven't run those numbers, but we're going to blow them right off the chart here. Right? So these numbers are what would happen all from starting off with $500,000 at the age of 65. So the, cool. the point is, guys, this absolutely can be done. You just have to have the skills. You have to get creative, right? You have to have a solid plan in place. At Tradeway, this is what we're all about. We're all about helping you guys learn these skills. We also want to be able to come alongside you and help you manage some of those funds. Ben's going to talk about like the UP program, for example, where we can do some short-term trading on your behalf. He's going to talk some about the AIM program. We can come alongside you and do some long-term investing. Whichever way you go, you got to make sure you have a solid plan. Very cool. Well, David, so one of the things that I'd like to talk about is just, you know, as we take the next steps in our presentation, I want to make sure that you recognize a big part of what we think at Tradeway is those numbers to work, that one, that two, that three percent. Big part of that is avoiding some fairly significant issues that happen inside the market. All right. So it's a big part of what we do at Tradeway is we start talking about what would it look like for us to be more prudent and to see the evil that comes our way. All right, Proverbs, looking right at this verse, for seeing evil, the market doesn't always move up. All right, so that means that we need to be able to do some things maybe a little differently, right? We don't want to be those that just kind of put our heads in the sands and get punished when those things happen. So what we want to do is we want to be able to look at scripture, leverage it to be able to teach us some of the skill sets, leverage proven standards, improve our character as we go, help us fix mistakes, help us to be perfected. And that word perfected is pretty awesome because it says God wants to give us special aptitude to be thoroughly furnished for good works, whether that be our business, our employment, our retirement, or whatever it is that we spend our time doing in our retirement. We want those things to be functional for not only us, but for the kingdom. Receive knowledge rather than choice gold. What we're talking about here is by knowledge, that's how things like precious riches can be added to your chambers. And David, I think you gave us a little bit of an idea about how with some knowledge and some skill sets and the power of numbers, there is a little bit of precious riches capable within those accounts. Absolutely. Absolutely. With When you talk about compounding numbers, it, it's it's incredible. It's it's. The more I learn about it, it's one of the coolest things God has put in this world for us. 
Well, Einstein was quoted to say that uh, compounding interest was like the eighth wonder of the world or something, right? So, I mean, when you begin to understand those numbers over time, they they get very large, but it does require us to be able to do something else. Now, David, in your numbers, you didn't include anything about being able to see some of the things that sometimes happens. All right, so let's talk about those things. Um, recessions happen mm -hmm. when they do. LPL research says that it takes about a 34% decline in your portfolio. That sounds pretty drastic. I think that might put a little bit of a dent in some of those numbers that we talked about. Increasing monetary supply in 2008 is what caused the mortgage-backed security crisis, and the portfolios dropped by 50%. So as awesome as what those numbers sound, they don't look so awesome if you happen to just decide to ride through these bear markets, it won't work. Those numbers did not include taking out some of these really big, bad bears. All right, so here's what we want you to recognize is that on average, the S&P goes up how much? Anybody want to guess? On average, what's the annual increase that the S&P sees? I'll answer the question. 6%. Macrotrends.net did all the math. On average, a 6% return. Now, that includes all the up years, all the down years. But if you take them all together and average them, Microtrends says 6% a year is the average. Now, some months or some years are better than that. Some, more, some are much worse than that. What ends up happening, though, is the, the declines, the recessions, those gray bars that you see. And David, I've, I just... You can see on this chart, it's trying to help you to see. It yep. happened in the 70s, and the size of these bars actually show you the width, the time frame of those recessions. Mm -hmm. What do you notice about those gray bars, David? Well, they, they, yeah, I mean, they're really thick in some of those years, and really thin some of those years. And I know it only ends at 2000. Like, it was almost like we're missing the last 20 years, Ben. You know, we, we, we still have the... Um, the 08 recession, and that's going to be a, a pretty steep one right there, too. So this is just a representation of what happens during those times. This is the stock market. All right, so gray bar, big decline. Gray bar extended, really big decline, right? So what is it that we're trying to show out here is that the greatest stock market decreases, the things that can most affect the law of large numbers that we showed you on those spreadsheets a few moments ago is the protracted periods of time where the market's in decline. You have to have different skills. You have to have different ways of being able to make money. And the average recessionary bear market LPL research, we just covered that, 34%. So in these boxes, on average, you're talking 34% declines. And knowing that, knowing that they happen every, you know, five, seven, ten-ish years, three, five, seven, ten-ish years, they happen on a somewhat cyclical basis, we ask the question, why just buy and hold? Why would you not take advantage of things like trading skills so that this doesn't have to be you? I love this slide, David, because it shows a huge amount of history in a different way. Like, let's, let's just go through this quickly. The, the blue bar, the dark blue, that is how long did a bear market last? How far did it come down? Well, that's the light blue. Then how many months did it take to get back to even? Even, all right? I'm not talking about making money. I'm saying getting back to even. So in this case, let's look at 2007, right? So you said that, hey, Ben, you, you didn't put the rest of the chart out there. Well, here you go. Here's the rest of the chart. In 2000, it went down 49%. And it took 56 months to get back to even. That's a long time, David. Absolutely. Now, here's the part that's interesting about it. It took 31 months to bottom out. So the market went down for 31 months. You're going to have to have some different skill sets to be able to make those returns. Even those small conservative returns, you're going to have to have different skill sets to make that work. Why is it so important? Well, how long does it take you to get your money back? If you take a 50% decline in your portfolio, you got to make 100% ROI just to get back to even. So what a lot of investment advisors don't tell you is avoiding these downturns is a pretty critical part to your long-term portfolio planning. If you take these hits, it takes a long time to be able to get back to even. So what we want to ask, what might it look like if your portfolio didn't take the big hits? And instead, 
if you were more conservative in these times in which we've got some technical indicators that tell us we're likely moving into a recession. Now here's where it gets a little sticky. There's an awful lot of people that think that the bear market of 2022 isn't over, David. Well, I'm looking at the charts today, Ben. It looks to me like the bear market's over. You know, there's an awful lot of debate on that right now. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to call out is, look, you trade while the market conditions make sense. But as you start to see the technical declines, when you begin to see the recessionary signs, that is one of the best ways to know that the market's likely going to go through a very significant decline. There's an awful lot of people that say the recession is yet to hit, and it is still coming. So David Mitchell and others that have that viewpoint, well, they think that we don't yet know the 2022 bar, and I can't yet print the 2022 bar on this chart. We went down 27%, David. Yeah. If David Mitchell is right, average bear market decline, if we're in a recession, what is that? 34. Ouch, that's a big bar. That's that's more than a third of my portfolio, David. Ouch. Yeah. And if this turns into something that's more systemic, like the banking crisis in 2008, well, those numbers get really alarming. Yeah. So friends, all we're trying to do is just show you that there is a knowledge, there is a skill set, there is a mentality around protecting your funds that can really help to see those large numbers play out because protecting your funds gives you the capability of allowing those numbers to play out. If you lose 34 or 50% of your portfolio, those 1% numbers are not going to be enough to make it back. Are we going into a recession? Well, this article from April, this is from Bank um, Bankrate, pretty interesting article. Bankrate did a survey, and they went across the various banks, the different parts of the economy. This was a fascinating article. And they're saying that their survey says that they still believe that it's a 64% likelihood that we are yet to see the recession hit in the United States due to the economic factors that are building. And if you listen to Fed Chair Powell yesterday and what it is that he said, he's not looking to decrease rates anytime soon. And yet the market is going up like it's 1999. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So there's still a lot of economists that think a recession is in fact coming. 2023, lasting in and through 2024, and the signs of that recession continue to show that it's more and more likely. Why is this a big deal? Well, because one of the biggest indicators that shows when things like recessions are about to hit is this thing called the inverted yield curve. And friends, if you haven't heard about it, I want to give you a little bit of an idea about some of the things that economists watch. And the reason why there's so many economists saying that we're going to go into a recession is this indicator right here, the inverted yield curve. Inverted yield curve, well, all it means is that you're getting paid better to take shorter term notes than what you are to take longer term notes. This makes no sense in economics. And that's the reason why it's one of the best indicators we've ever seen for future trouble coming to the economy. What's happening here is that you can go out today and you can get paid 5% for a two-year note. But if you want to go to a 30-year note, you're only going to get paid 3%. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. So that is one of the best indicators that when the short-term viewpoint, the money that you're getting paid for these short-term notes is so extremely high compared to the long-term, what that does is it starts to put pressure into the economic systems and the engines related to the liquidity of the economy. And once that liquidity starts to bind up to the point where they can't support the economy, that's when we go into a recession. And on average, it takes nine to 12 months from when that yield curve inverts. And David, here's the part that's a little alarming for me. We're at 10 months. Oh, wow. The yield curve has been inverted for 10 months. And the market is making what we call an exhaustion move. And there's an awful lot of people that are saying this cannot last. All right, so trade it while you can, but be prepared because the signs of the economy are telling those that pay attention, don't get sucked into it. Don't get sucked into it.
All right, so can we use this knowledge? Can we protect our wealth? Maybe can we be more prudent? Can we be more prepared to act? Well, if we know that these recessions happen, they happen every few years, we know the damage of them. What might we do to be able to get more defensive? When we start to see the market technicals break down, we can have some skill sets. What we teach in the tradeway system, we're talking about some of the skill sets and some of the opportunities that we can have in those protections of those 80% funds as well. Why? Well, let's put this into pictures, David. This is from Vanguard. Vanguard, right? It's it, it's in the name. They're all about guarding your funds. Well, what Vanguard is trying to say here in this advertisement, this is straight from them. You know, making money, it's better to just build it slowly over time, just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, because this is so much better than making one stone turn into seven. What? I mean, they're telling you right here that you can take one stone and turn it into seven stones. That's crazy. I mean, they're, they're subliminal advertising. Somebody didn't think this one through. You can make money really fast in the stock market, but then you can lose it really fast. But then you can build it really fast, and then you can lose it really fast. But what if you had some skill sets where maybe you just got better about building it and not losing as much? And I love this part because this is Tradeway trying to get you to understand that sometimes the marketing doesn't work. Because what if this is 2008, where your haircut was 50%? You lost your toupee. What if this was your retirement year? What if you were looking to retire and you no longer had an nest egg? Friends, we're trying to get our, our friends just like you to recognize that being conservative in times when the economy is looking to go through these very negative, protracted cycles it makes a lot of sense to get defensive. So why not just think like a trader? Why not do some of the things that David was talking about? With your long-term funds, I'm suggesting that you look on a quarterly basis. Every quarter, take a look. What do I think the market's going to do? What do I think this next quarter looks like? Where am I in the cycle of bulls and bears? And project in the next quarter. Switch up your investment choices to match up with the projected market cycle for that quarter. All right, so for those of you, some of you are asking, what do I do on my 401k? Well, we had an entire webinar that described how you can probably find some more conservative, uh, more cash oriented, some things like money markets inside your 401k. If you didn't get a chance to watch that webinar, why don't, why don't you ask, go to amped.tradeway.com, amped email us amped.tradeway.com, ask for a replay. I gave you some pretty good ways in which you can consider trying to manage that 401k. Uh, I would suggest that you would want to go ahead and put a calendar invite to just sort of remind you. Sometimes it's difficult to remember. Put an event on your calendar to just, you know, on a quarterly basis, go look at your funds, see how you're doing. And then remember this, most bull markets last three to five years. So that 6% rise that we talked about, normally that's what happens every three to five years. The problem is those bear markets, when they come, they can be as long as 18 months. But here's the deal. The bias of the market bullish until you're near the end of a protracted bullish cycle. Double tops, triple tops, those are some of the things that we look for. It's the very things that we teach you inside the tradeway system. You start seeing those signs, those indicators, know what to do about being con conservative and defensive before it happens. What does this look like? Well, what about if we could help you? Well, you know, you could consider joining the Tradeway long-term investing program called AMPT, A -M -P -T. Our registered investment advisors, hey, Dave, is that like you and me or who are we talking about there? Registered investment advisors. Absolutely, Ben. That's you, me, and Jenny. Jenny's not on with us today, but um, she's one of us as well. Uh, we love to help you guys just answer your questions, right? Uh, we, we have the opportunity to sit down with you and just go through your retirement funds and, and see how we can help um, and see what the options are for you. All right. And if you leverage our AMP services, one of the things we find is, is that a lot of people leverage what we're telling them inside of AMP and the alerts that we give them, and they start making choices inside their 401k allocations. So that's a pretty powerful option. And our AMP investment team, well, we help to allocate your capital based on the cycles of the market. Are we in a bullish cycle, a bearish cycle? What's the long-term conditions of the market telling us? And when we can't tell, that's when the squirrel market alerts come in and we get really defensive and we start looking at how do we more safely preserve our assets.
Maybe Mitchell's investing philosophies are behind everything that we do, and it's designed for preservation of the wealth that we have. And it's all about matching up the cycles of the market, riding the bumps, but avoiding those big bear market cliffs. And there are different portfolio types, different risk categories, and our team is here to help you with that 80% long-term asset management as a part of these long-term programs. Now, David, a few moments ago, you kind of broke it up. You talked about the 80% money and the 20% money. What was the design of that 20% money? Absolutely. The 20% money, that is for short-term trading. Right. So in the example, Bob was leaving 80%, just like it says here, 80% for that long term management. Um, and then Bob took the remainder 20% and did short term trading with that. Right. Well, so we're talking about our 80% money. We're talking about preservation. We're talking about being able to try to avoid the cliffs of those bear market cycles. And we're talking about how Tradeway can be a part of helping you with it. How? Well, consider moving your funds over to AMP. Most 401ks and IRAs, well, they're very limited in their various choices. Could you move your funds straight away? Could we help you with those funds? Could you become a part of the AMP program so that we can help you? Pretty easy. If you've got a 401k, you can ask your benefits administrator. This is the key question, friends. Take this down as a note. If you have a 401k and you're like, how much can I, how much can you help me with? Well, ask your employer. Ask them this question right here. See that? How much can I roll over to an IRA? Now, this is an IRA outside of your employer. This came up just the other day. Somebody's like, yeah, you can roll it over to an IRA that's still underneath the 401k. I'm like, okay, that's better than nothing, but we can't necessarily help you with that. What we would do is we'd help you to create an interactive broker's account. We'd help you to transfer the money over as an IRA out of your 401k, and then we can help trade it with our technology. Tradeway offers you help with being able to protect your assets, AMPT invests with the cycles of the market, and we have different investment choices. Now, David, we do recommend a minimum of a $10,000 investment to be able to use the diversification that we have, but there's one key thing that I believe is really important for our friends to recognize, and this is industry leading. One of the things that we talk about in that squirrel market is what do we do when we just don't know? Well, Interactive Brokers pays some of the best money market rates in the business. They're currently paying 4.58. And what that is, is that represents the Fed funds rate minus 0.5. So if the Fed does raise rates again in July, which there's actually a lot of speculation they will, when they do raise rates again, which Jerry, Jay Powell said there's probably two more rate increases coming, which I still don't understand why the market is doing what it's doing with that sort of news, tells me that something's not matching up. Our cash deposits are earning a pretty substantial rate. Now, that is based on a $10,000 or greater cash balance, and it's when you have $100,000 in your account. If you're below 100, they're going to prorate that number. It won't quite be 4.58%. But that cash rate is really attractive, David. Yeah, Ben. And even if they prorate it, it's going to be so much better than what a lot of banks out there are paying. You know, Chase, what are they paying? Like 0.02% or something like that? It's crazy. So if you prorated it, you know, if you got $25,000 and they prorated it and you're making what, one and a half percent, it's so much better than than what many other places are paying. So some people are like, hey, I'm going to go buy a CD. And I'm like, you know, this is paying like CD rates with zero tying up of your capital. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty powerful. All right, so how did the team do? Well, here's some of the things. Here's all of the various things in 2022. We can just look back at the past. These were all areas in which our team gave alerts. And here's a few things that happened along the way, right? So here's Ben, very beginning of the year. Futures show a doji candle. Markets seem to be showing it's time for a rest. All right, here's the actual market alert. Talked how about it's often where these signature candlesticks as they come in. These, these create a, a catalyst that maybe the market's going to look for an excuse. And I'm like, often at this time, the market finds an excuse. Did it? Well, yeah, it did. And what it found as the excuse was the Fed. This is when the Fed started to do some pretty crazy things with interest rates. I'm like, that's the sort of thing that often takes the markets lower. So let's look at what happened. <laughs> uh, interesting. All right, so we got that one right. We were talking all about how what Fed Powell, our Fed Chairman Powell was doing, how that leads to some pretty negative things and how the market's showing us it's ready for a rest anyway. 
Sure enough, it tanked. Vinny Taylor, another one of our um, analysts that helps here. Look at the bolded area. It's hard for me to anticipate this market will keep moving straight up. A relief rally makes more sense. I wonder if after that, it could be an opportunity for the market to fail yet again. So even if it doesn't get all that high, well, think what it's going to do is it's just going to push the market higher temporarily, and then the market's going to roll back over. All right, so what happened next? It moved up, came into a resistance area, and then it failed, just as Jenny said it would, right? It's like, this is probably just a relief rally because the news is very negative and the technicals tell us to expect more downward pressure. Market decided to show us who was boss. It's not a big deal, not surprising, because what happens is if the market gets surprised near a resistance area, well, it's typically going to push the market down pretty strongly. I, I gave you a, a couple of articles to read, but here's the, here's the gist. Keep in mind, we've shared this before. Bear markets coupled with a recession last 14 months. On average, they've declined 37%. If history is any guide, we got further to fall. How do we do this, David? Well, David Mitchell and team, we leverage scripture because we believe that there is practical implementation knowledge in scripture. And as you read through Ecclesiastes, you're going to see it talks about the reasons why we diversify. It talks about the need to diversify. And it's going to talk about the risk return straight from scripture. Straight from scripture. What does the Bible say about investing and diversifying? Well, the bottom date categories, we get that from Ecclesiastes. 16 subdivisions, that's how we create the diversification in the bullish markets. Those are straight from Ezekiel. And these correlate to groups that we know today. XLE. David, XLE, oh, that would be an ETF for energy. energy. We, div we diversify across these various 16 subdivisions, and they actually come straight from Scripture. Things like XLE, which is energy, XLR, which is real estate. I'm telling you, these things are a part of the world today, and they came from these passages in Ezekiel. And we build your models around that same information. Pretty crazy. Very practical knowledge straight from Scripture. So what do AMP members get? Or help with protecting your funds. We help you to avoid being in that down bear market for those protracted periods of time. Now, David, I didn't ask this during the presentation earlier, but how many months did those things last? Often like more than a year? The I, I missed, I'm sorry, I was reading a Q&A. We talked yeah, about those, the bear markets. Yeah, those bear markets often last more than a year, right? Absolutely. Like, like we showed down on that bar graph, the dot-com crash lasted about two and a half years. That was just on the way down, actually. And then, of course, it took a whole lot longer to get back up. And the interesting thing, Ben, is that right when it finally reached the same level that it was before, the high, that's when the 08 recession happened. And that one lasted it was about a year and a half or so. And then it moved back up, and it took... It was until 2013 before it finally broke through the high of the year 2000. To put so that, we in had a strong rise at 2008, and then something happened to the economy that caused it to go down 50%. Yeah. And there's people that are calling into question whether or not we're living in the exact sort of time frame with the exact same sort of conditions where with all the banking crises that are going on in the background, we might be looking at another 2008 style crash or another 2000 style crash. And if you look at the chart of 2000, David, oh my word, today's charts look an awful lot like the charts of 2000. The big yeah. declines, the recovery, just to be followed up by an extremely steep decline. So, you know, if they're right, maybe working with a company that's got some skill sets to help you with that, to avoid being in those bear market crashes all the way to the bottom, that can have a pretty significant impact on your portfolio. What we do is during the bullish times, we take advantage of diversification. And during the bear markets, we take advantage of inverse positions. Inverse positions? What is that? I, it, that, that sounds odd, David. What's an inverse position? 
Yeah, Ben, an inverse position is where we can make money on the way down. Now, for us traders in the room, you are automatically thinking, oh, puts. Yeah, it's that kind of an idea. Um, but there's a lot of other instruments that can be used to make money on the way down. Inverse ETFs, for example. All right, so an inverse ETF trades like a stock. You buy it. And if the market moves down, the value of that ETF, that stock position that you purchased, goes up in value. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. You can get the access to IBKR's high yield money markets, those treasury rates minus 0.5. And then take one updates from our team. I don't wonder what's going on in the market and why this is happening. Well, our team gives you information about the news that we're tracking and what is it that we're using to help make our portfolio decisions. What this looks like is that we've got two different paths and you get to choose your path. The pro program, AMPT Pro, see that right there where it says AMPT, that's advanced. Um, that, that's the portfolio management where you kind of do the work with us. We give you our advice. We teach you how to use our tools, but you click the buttons. You're becoming a professional on your own portfolio with our help. If you want to do it yourself, we've got a program to do that. If you're like, you know, Ben, I have this thing called a JLB. And I have this thing called an LIFE where I'm not in front of my computer all the time. Can you just press the buttons for me? Absolutely. That's the AIM program. So whether you want us to press the buttons for you or you'd like to use our technology and press the buttons yourself, we can help you with it. Hey, but I like to tell people all the time that the big difference, startup costs are a little higher here because we got to train you. Mm -hmm. Startup fees are smaller here, but we're still paying the team, the people that are going to help you with getting your account started, getting your funds transferred, right? That's what helps cover them. And then you're going to pay Tradeway a percentage management fee on an annual basis that's slightly higher than if you're doing it on your own. So startup, slightly higher. Fees, slightly lower. Startup, lower. Fees, slightly higher. Kind of depends on where you are. Now, David... You talk with a lot of people. What the most people go? Pro. I'm sorry, you broke up. Say it again. Do most people go with the pro program or the aim oh, program? Honestly, most people have been going with aim. You know, pro is what we had initially before we had aim, and a lot of people are like, guys, we're having trouble pushing the buttons. Guys, I was one of those people, right? Before I came to work for Tradeway, I was in the AMPT program uh, and I was in the pro program. And there were times where at work, things were on fire and I'd get that email, hey, it's time to go to cash or hey, it's time to get in the market. I couldn't do it. And it'd be the next day before I'm like, is it, can I still do it? And maybe I missed a good buy point or something. So a lot of people, including myself are like, hey, we would love it if someone can push the buttons for us. At the end of this presentation, we're going to give people an opportunity to meet with us. And during those meetings, we're going to tell them that these are not the fees they have to pay, right? We're going to offer them some pretty substantial discounts. So we'll tell you more about those discounts that are available when you book a call with us to be able to talk about your questions in your specific situation. All right. Now, David, this is the one that we were kind of teasing a little bit earlier, that 20% money. What if Tradeway could help you with it? What if we could help you trade your 20% money? Well, that's a brand new program that we have announced just a couple months back. It's called the Ultra Portfolio. Now, I'm a little excited about this program. You might say I'm a little amped about it. But yeah, I know, big eye roll, dad joke time. But the Ultra Portfolio, the Up Portfolio is designed for short-term trading. You got a team of people in the background that are getting in and out of the market on short-term trades. Usually they last anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks. Whereas in the long-term portfolio, we could be in position for months at a time. One's a little bit more of a medium term. That's the, the aim portfolio, the preservation with the cycles of the market. The ultra portfolio, no, this is designed to be that 20% trading money. And our team can help you to do that. Now we would suggest the 10 to 20 $5,000 is what you want in this account. The minimum is 10. Or like 25,000 is better because if we ever have to go into day trade situations, it makes it easier for us to be able to help manage that capital. So the ultra portfolio, the up portfolio, we press the buttons. We do steps one, two, three, and four trades. David, the other day we did an iron condor. 
We Ooh, fancy. credit spreads, right? We, we we do debit spreads. We we do all of those options trades as part of this program. All right. Get your questions answered and meet with an advisor. That would be myself, David Berbugan. You can meet with one of us to create a plan together about helping to protect your wealth. You're going to have actual questions about your actual situation. Hey, can you help me with my 401k? The answer is maybe. Hey, can you help me with my old 401k at my other employer? The answer is absolutely yes. We can help you with cleaning that situation up. I was just talking about a, a, a position of a one of our brand new AIM client members. He has four old 401ks that he has done nothing with. Guess what? We're going to be able to help him to get these things consolidated and cleaned up. So whether you have a, a Roth IRA, whether you have a traditional IRA, whether you want to do a rollover from your 401k, there's so many ways that we can help you with your retirement savings. And then take a portion of it. Let us help you with that ultra portfolio while you get your skill sets, perhaps. Or maybe you have a lifestyle that makes it more difficult for you to trade and you'd like our help with larger sums of your funds. Well, that's what these programs are for. All right, so what's the last thing that I need to do? Well, I'm going to launch this poll, and this poll is where you can tell us that you'd like to meet with us. Are you interested in getting a meeting? Well, if you click this poll, it's you telling us that you would like to meet. What's going to happen is in the background, Zoom knows your email address that you use to register with us. When you click on this poll question, you're going to be telling us that you'd like for us to get with you. What's going to happen? We're actually going to... Did it launch, David? Did it come up okay? Yep, yep, I see it. It's okay. good to go. Um, what's going to happen is, is that when you click on this button, it's your way of telling us that you would like to have a private conversation with myself, David, or Jenny. And we're going to send you a, an email that says, hey, when would you like to meet? Click my calendar. It's going to pull up my calendar. It's going to show you all the places where I'm available. Find a time that works for you, and then we'll get on a private Zoom session, and we'll talk through your questions. The key is every single one of you has a different scenario, and each one of you has different questions. And because it's private financial information, I can't do it in an open webinar. So let's schedule a meeting, and let's talk about how AMP can be a part of helping you with your long-term investing funds. All right. Well, David, I think that one of the other things that we need to talk about is, you know, our, our friends that are maybe watching this after the fact, they're they're watching this as a recording. Can they still get our help? Absolutely, guys. If you're watching this on a recording, first of all, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to still go ahead and learn and help yourself out um, by watching this. So feel free to reach out to amped at tradeway.com. If you would like a free consultation as well, amped at tradeway.com is a way that you can reach out to us and we'll be able to get back with you, send you a scheduling link so that you can meet with Ben or Jenny or myself. We'd love to help you. Interesting. Um, so there are two questions. So if you scroll down on the page, there are two questions. There's some people saying I can't submit the poll, probably because you haven't answered both questions. So try answering both questions. And if you're still not able, just send us an email to amp at tradeway.com and say, hey, I'd like to meet with an advisor. I was at your webinar. Dena has a great question. Look at this one. Wow. I want to join, but I'm really concerned. How do you guys trade for so many people? Uh, that is a great question. So, David, how is it that we can trade for so many people? Yeah, that really is a great question. So we leverage some technology that Interactive Brokers has. Interactive Brokers is the custodian that we use in the AMPS program, and they have some technology that allows us to, with just a few clicks of the button, get all the accounts in the market or out of the market. It's super cool because we don't have to go log into everyone's specific account and get them in or out and then go log into the next person. That would, yep. be, that would be super hard. This is why so many other firms don't go to cash. It's too much work, but with their technology, we're able to just do a few clicks and everyone out. So that helps us be able to protect you. It's pretty amazing because here's, here's the way that it works. What happens is that the technology in the background basically is able to figure out what's the account value for your account and all the other of hundreds and hundreds of accounts. 
And what it does, let's say, for example, in the UP program, I'd like to go by 5% of Microsoft. 5% of what? 5% of your account. All right, so you have a $200,000 account. Somebody else has a $20,000 account. Somebody else has a $60,000 account. The technology is smart enough to go, all right, for the $200,000 account, 5% of it is this, and I can go buy this many shares of Microsoft. And for this account, it's this many shares of Microsoft. And it does it all based on your account value and the percentages that we say to put of that specific stock. It's pretty amazing technology. I'm not exaggerating. I can go into the tool. I can select the groupings of the account. I can say I want 5% of Microsoft, and I can buy 5% of Microsoft against hundreds of accounts in less than 30 seconds. Pretty cool technology. Absolutely. All right. Well, David, that was a really good set of questions while our friends were filling out the poll. Is there any other questions that came up that we need to cover? Ben, the board is clear. All right. Well, David, I think that the last thing for us to do is what you know we're prompted to say here on the screen. It shouldn't be a prompting. It's genuine. Let's say thank you. Seriously, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for learning with us. David, you did a great job being able to present just the power of those numbers. Hopefully our friends have seen that there is a, a real wisdom factor involved with being able to manage your funds for the long term. What Tradeway is all about is helping you to do it. So look forward to being able to help those of you who have clicked on the poll. And if you are watching this webinar after the fact, again, David, why don't you close us out and just make sure our friends know how to contact us. Absolutely. Guys, if, if you still want to contact us, you didn't fill out the poll or whichever, again, your ticket is amped at tradeway.com, right? Um, and you know what? If, if you forget that, even support at tradeway.com. That's one too. You email them and say, hey, I have questions about amped. They're just going to send it to us so that we can get in touch with you. So amped at tradeway.com or support at tradeway.com. We'd love to help you.